Hello there, today I am filming the second half of my December wrap up. Two things, I am sorry for the terrible lighting, um, it is getting dark outside, I have no choice but to have the main light on, sorry about that but I really just want to get this video done. Secondly, sorry if my voice sounds a bit strange or if I lose it at any point during this video, I have been completely wiped out for the past week with flu. It feels like a really, really long time since I filmed because I filmed all my videos for the new year period before Christmas. Um, and that, that just seems like ancient to me now. It feels like years ago. And to be honest, it feels kind of strange to be talking about the books that I read in December. Because it does. It just feels like a lifetime ago. Getting on with it, I want to get these out of the way. I'm not going to overly go into detail about them. Anyway, I still wanted to let you guys know what I have been reading. So, I started with my short story collection for the month, which was Michelle Faber's The Apple, which is Crimson Petal and the White short stories. Those who have been here for a while will know that Crimson Petal and the White is one of my my by far favourite books ever. I just adore it. I think it's fantastic. The writing is amazing. Um, but a lot of people complain about the fact that it kind of stops quite abruptly. Um, and it doesn't really wrap things up. But I actually think that's perfect. I think that suits the story perfectly. I think wrapping it up too much would have been overdoing it. Um, but anyway, in sort of response to people urging him to write a sequel, Michelle Faber wrote a short story collection which isn't necessarily following on from The Crimson Petal. There are, I think, two stories that do follow on, um, though they don't overly go into what happened, um, but they are sort of following the characters of the book after the book. But for the most part, this just follows characters within the book, sort of sub-characters, um, and we go a bit more into their story. We also see Sugar, the main character of The Crimson Petal. Um, we see her before the events of the book take place. Um, I have to say I really, really hated this. It made me really angry, actually. Um, I picked it up thinking I was going to love it. Um, but I actually feel like this damaged the memory of The Crimson Petal and the White for me in some ways. And I think that's really disappointing. Um, for one, I don't think this stands up as a collection at all if you haven't read The Crimson Petal and the White. Um, I think Michelle Faber kind of forgot to make these stories in their own right. So so they don't really explain anything, you don't really get to know the characters. Um, also, the stories in the stories were just a bit weak, I can't really remember any of them. Um, and also there was one story that does follow on from the end of the book, as I say, and I won't give anything away. Um, but it kind of, I liked how the story ended, and I liked that you were left to kind of decide what you made of And I felt like the two stories that do follow on from the end of The Crimson Petal in this, kind of ruined that. They took it in a direction that it didn't need to go and I don't think it necessarily should have gone. Um, yeah, I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I think I gave it two stars anyway. Then I finished an audiobook, which was The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. It was a reread for me. I did read the physical copy um, when it came out. I probably read it about two years ago now. Um, and I wanted to listen to the audio because Amanda narrates it herself. Um, and also there were sort of some musical additions. I have to say the musical additions at points didn't necessarily suit to me. There were kind of like musical backtracks and things that didn't necessarily suit. But anyway, <laughs> um, it was an enjoyable experience to listen to and I think it was quite nice being able to get into Amanda's head in that way. So for those of you who don't know, this is kind of part memoir, part sort of creative self-help book, um, written by Amanda Palmer, who is the lead singer in a band called The Dresden Doll. She's also now a solo artist, and she is also married to Neil Gaiman, just as a side thought. Um, and it's basically about Amanda Palmer funded the largest ever crowdfunding. Um, she funded a whole album and made an extreme amount of money on crowdfunding um, and she was the first artist to really make that in the mainstream and really bring that to people's attention and this book basically looks at how she came to feel so comfortable asking from her audience and how artists almost guilt themselves into thinking that they can't openly work with their audience and that they have to do it through middlemen I um, mean it looks at the sort of hassle that she's had and the kind of negative press that she has gotten because of that and because of other decisions she's made um, and it, yeah it's it's just a kind of nice, inspiring, arty story. I have to say, I don't necessarily agree with everything Amanda says. I think she has quite a immature standpoint. Like, there is a point where she's talking about breaking up with her label. Um, and she's quite scathing towards the label. 
and I kind of felt like even though it's respectable that she broke away from her label and she wanted to interact directly with fans, I kind of feel like she was a bit unfair on the music label because they are a business um, <laughs> and I feel like she kind of doesn't acknowledge that. She basically just paints them as these devils um, which isn't necessarily helpful for anyone and I don't think it's necessarily accurate either. Um, <clears throat> so there are a few issues like that and I know a lot of people either love or hate Amanda Palmer. I think she's a problematic figure but I do like her and I think what's really lovely about this book is the love story between her and Neil which she goes into quite a lot. Um, it's really Really nice and it's nice to know that Neil Gaiman is an author and somebody that I know as well um, but yeah it's nice to get a bit of their relationship in there as well I would recommend it I wouldn't necessarily say it's a standout book for me but yeah I liked it and I did enjoy listening to it as well then I read Philip Pullman's The Amber Spyglass I have been reading these for the last three Christmases and this was my last one and I have been making it so that I finish them on Christmas Eve because I think they are such magical Christmas reads um, and I did exactly the same thing with The Amber Spyglass this year. I have to say, of all the three, this was probably my least favourite, but I think there are a few reasons for that. For one, I think I always find this with the third of, of a trilogy. It ends up being very much a sort of tying everything together situation, which kind of annoys me a bit. So there was that, but also I think reading them in the format that I have, although they were really lovely Christmas reads, um, it kind of was too large a gap between the books. I mean, it was three years this year since I read Northern Lights. Um, and obviously there's a lot that I have forgotten. So a lot of the stuff I think went over my head. What I would really like to do now that I finished this series is go back and reread them. And obviously I won't say too much about what happens in the Amber Spyglass because it is the third one. Um, and to be honest, most of you probably already know. But um, it's really lovely and really magical and I really enjoyed them. But as I say, the Amber Spyglass was my least favourite of the three, sadly. Then I picked up Ali Smith's Winter. I picked this up by Fluke on Christmas Eve. I think I saw someone's video and they said that it was the perfect read for Christmas. Um, and I had kind of been putting it off until after Christmas because I didn't want to pick it up as soon as I got it. I had too many books that needed attention first. After seeing that, I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself to winter over the Christmas period. Um, and started reading it on Christmas Eve and it actually starts on Christmas Eve. Um, <laughs> so that was quite nice. This is basically about a man called Art who is going home for Christmas and he's meant to be taking his girlfriend Charlotte. She breaks up with him so he pays somebody to go and play the part of Charlotte um, and he goes to his mum's house and we sort of see their relationship with each other um, and also the things they don't know about each other. The girl who he pays Lux, she sort of ends up becoming this confidant for both of them and we obviously see her conversations with both of them and we see through her parts of them that they don't show to each other and come to sort of understand their relationship with each other a lot more that way. Also there are issues with Art's mum seeing things and not wanting to admit to herself that she's seeing things which is also something that Art is experiencing at some points in this book. Um, I liked this. I have to say I've been watching a lot of people really loving this recently and I didn't really love it which is interesting because as an Ali Smith fan I think it's fair for me to say that and I know she's a very Marmite writer but she's normally a writer that really hits the spot with me. So it's not Ali Smith's style that I don't like but what I don't like about this book is the current references and I found the same with Autumn. Now looking back on Autumn for me which I read at the start of this year actually I couldn't tell you anything about it. I, it's completely forgettable to me. It's a completely forgettable book. And I would say the same about this. I think I preferred this quite a bit more. I preferred the storyline and I preferred the characters. I felt they're much easier to warm to. Um, and I felt there was much more to sort of tie everything together. But for me, I just, I, I, I don't think these books are going to stand the test of time. And it's, it's kind of maybe an unfair statement to make because, you know, the whole point of these books is that they have current references in them. But I just, they don't work for me. I don't like books with current references in them. I don't think they stand the test of time. I don't think they're particularly interesting. Especially with this, I found that Ali Smith was kind of referencing things that have happened in the past year. Very much in mind of it being read by people who have been alive in the past year. So I really don't think it's something that's going to stand the test of time and that kind of ruined this for me. It's still got four stars. I still enjoyed it. I would still recommend it. I'm just not overly sold on these books, sadly. Not overly sold on them. I did have a good end to the month with Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Um, 
I was kind of going into this skeptically because I often find with hyped books, generally go into them with quite high expectations and they generally let you down. That said, I really, really enjoyed this book. I think it was especially lovely because I have read um, Sarah Winman's When God Was a Rabbit probably about seven years ago now. And it was a good book, but it was an underdeveloped book and it was very much, you could tell that she was just starting out. Whereas jumping to this book, she has come along so much and she is so... I think she's using such beautiful language now. So it was really nice to see that little progression there. Um, I was, as I say, I've been ill and it started last Friday. So last Saturday and Sunday, I literally just stayed in all day and read um, and I was reading Tin Man and it really was a comfort for me when I was pretty fed up with myself. Um, this basically looks at, it's quite difficult to explain. It goes into the AIDS epidemic and it very much looks at the impact that has, which I think is always a really fascinating subject in books. But it also looks at friendship and love and unrequited love and what people can mean to you and it was just really heartwarming and lovely though heartbreaking and sad at the same time um, we basically follow Ellis and Michael who were childhood friends and their relationship has kind of been quite hard for both of them to gauge over the years um, Ellis has gone off and been married and everything but they've always had this love for each other and their relationship has always been kind of across the boundaries um, and it looks at both of them sort of reacting to that and we look first from Ellis's point of view and then we see Michael's point of view um, and see how they vary and yeah it's just a really warming and lovely book it's only short so it doesn't take long at all and yeah it was just really heartwarming and just as I say beautiful beautiful language in there so I'm sorry if these reviews weren't the most concise I really do not feel with it at the moment I'm hoping to fix that soon I just as I say it's been the worst start to the year really because I feel like I'm just completely out of everything um but anyway such is life I hope everyone had a really good new year and a happy Christmas and are enjoying 2018 so far and I will see you next time bye